They did it. The mad lads did it. LTT released their Switch emulation on the Steam Deck video and it's every bit as good as we imagined. Good timing too because there are also rumors about Nintendo games coming to PC, but it's not as exciting as it sounds. And lastly, we have some cool Steam Deck updates. Let's get into it. What's good, Deck Gang? You know we have to start with that LTT video. That was a stroke of genius, a work of art. It was a W for tinkering, for games preservation, and for consumer rights. I can't imagine that any of you watching this video missed that video, but I'm talking about a new video by LTT starring the resident Linux expert, Anthony. It's a how-to on Switch emulation for the Steam Deck, but more than that, it goes into the why. Anthony talks about the legality and ethics of emulation, and he does a deep dive on how to dump your own games, from your own Switch. LTT was very clearly poking the bear that is Nintendo's legal team with this one. But I think there's a subtext to this video that is kind of like, LTT wins either way. Either Nintendo doesn't take the video down and they have this mega hit. As of writing, it's just shy of a million views in 18 hours and it's number 20 on the game trending list. Alternatively, Nintendo does take the video down and they get free publicity for Floatplane, a video platform that LTT have full control over. Not to mention, I'm sure he'd get another trending video out of the drama. That is as clear of a win-win as you can get. Now, will Nintendo try to get this taken down? Personally, I don't think they touch this with a 10 foot pole. Their usual avenue for takedowns are copyright claims. And just like in my video where I threw away my Switch, there is no Nintendo copyrighted material here. All of the visuals that would be copyrighted material have been blurred and there is no Nintendo audio throughout. So they likely won't take that road. I know a lot of people will say Nintendo doesn't care if it's right or wrong, they're going to do it anyway, but the truth is that as far as I know, they've shown no willingness to put a copyright claim on a video that has no Nintendo copyrighted material. And I doubt they would start with Linus, who not only has the right, as any YouTuber does, to dispute the claim, but also has regular contact with YouTube representatives. Nintendo does have one other avenue they might take, however, and they're likely to get further with this one, and it's actually worse than a typical content ID or DMCA strike. This one is called a CTM complaint, standing for Circumvention of Technological Protection Measures. In Google's own words, they're referring to, quote, tools that allow users to evade a software's licensing protocol. This can mean serial numbers, key gens, passwords, and other methods to hack software or games, end quote. And here's an important distinction between a CTM claim and a copyright claim. They say, quote, a CTM claim is appropriate when the infringed material isn't present in the video or directly linked to, but the video offers a way for users to access it illegitimately, end quote. Is the LTT video actually offering a way for users to access copyright material illegitimately? Absolutely not. But this seems like something that could more realistically be argued in court. More importantly, it doesn't have to go to court to be effective. As I said, a YouTube creator can appeal a copyright claim. And then the entity that filed the claim has a brief, limited time to respond in kind. If they don't respond to the appeal within a couple of weeks, then the video creator automatically wins the appeal. Conversely, when it comes to a CTM claim, the party making the claim can avoid responding to the appeal indefinitely, leaving the creator in limbo. That's exactly what happened to Modded Warfare who showed his viewers how to boot the Switch into RCM mode and subsequently Nintendo gave him the boot. He later made a very informative video on the consequences of that CTM complaint and Modded Warfare even commented about this on the LTT video. So maybe I'm changing my mind a little bit and maybe Nintendo actually does attempt a CTM complaint. I wonder how LTT would respond to that. They could feasibly remove the jailbreak section of the video, but who knows? Either way, I'm strapped in and ready to see what comes next. And you know, ordinarily, I would hope that a video like this one would finally get people to stop saying things like emulation is illegal or emulation of current gen is unethical, but I know it won't. It seems that sometimes the facts don't matter, right? It doesn't matter that emulation is a standard development practice and obviously doesn't equate to piracy. It doesn't matter that you can pirate without emulating or emulate without pirating. It doesn't matter that there are great benefits to emulating and reverse engineering and tinkering. And it doesn't matter that legality and morality are not always one and the same or that history is littered with proof of this. But even in knowing all that, I will take this W for today. Today we got a win, folks. What do you think? Do you agree? Is this a good look or a bad look? Do you think there's a moral obligation to wait an arbitrary number of years before emulating? Let me know in the comments.
With that, let's talk about the rumors of Nintendo games coming to PC. So this was sparked by evidence of the mobile game Mario Kart Tour perhaps coming to PC, but the history is actually a bit deeper than that, and there are leaks that indicate other Nintendo games could come to PC as well. I mean stuff like Bayonetta 3, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, and Mario and Rabbids. I don't think that any of this will come to fruition, but it's worth covering. So let's start with the Mario Kart Tour thing. As I said, Mario Kart Tour is an iOS and Android game, and I've never played it, but it genuinely looks pretty fun. Of course, I'm showing footage of Garfield Kart instead because I'm not willing to risk the copyright claim. This game is playable on the deck, by the way. In any case, back in December, Google announced that it was bringing the Google Play Store to Windows PCs, so by default, that would technically make games like Mario Kart Tour and Super Mario Run playable on PC. In fact, you could probably already do this on your Steam Deck right now using an Android emulator like Bluestacks. Nonetheless, there was a recent update to the story because the Twitter account Mario Kart Tour News has shared the results of some data mining that show Mario Kart Tour is being prepared for PC play. There look to be new variables for mouse support as well as some other variables that indicate playability on Windows 11. Now, even if that's all true, things can change and this could never become playable on PC. But even if it is true, I think this news isn't terribly exciting for most people watching despite the fact that this looks like a decent game. What might be more interesting is the GeForce leak from way back, which I have not forgotten, particularly because that leak proved to be remarkably reliable so far. The GeForce leak essentially predicted Uncharted for PC, God of War for PC, FF7 Remake for PC, also the Resident Evil 4 Remake, Dragon's Dogma 2, the GTA Remasters, and more. That list also happened to have Bayonetta 3, Mario and Rabbids, and New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Now, I don't think those games are coming to PC, but what in the world were they doing in that list? Is there any scenario where you can see a proper Nintendo console game coming to PC? What about a Nintendo Switch Online where you can access retro emulation on the PC? Do you think that could become a thing? I can't picture a world where Nintendo does any of this, but they've surprised me a bunch over the years, and perhaps there may be another surprise for me in store. All right, and before we get into the Steam Deck updates and community spotlights, I want to give you all an update on my experience with the Win 600. I gave you all my review of this one in my last video, and it was a bit of a mixed bag. So I did finish the Cuphead DLC on this thing, and yeah, it's really nice to use for 2D games. I really like the size and the form factor, but only for games where I use the D-pad. If I'm forced to use the analog stick, I'm going to bail. But for 2D games, I definitely enjoy firing this one up. Also, I tried to play the new Klonoa remaster on this since I figured I can use the D-pad for that too, but the graphics proved to be too much to handle for the Win 600. I couldn't even get to a lock 30, even after turning down most settings, so I went back to the Steam Deck for that one. Also in my review of the Win 600, I said that you can't control the TDP in the Quick Access menu, which I believe is still true, but Ambernick did provide me with a tool to alter the TDP in SteamOS. I'll look into that and report back. The Steam Deck received a new update in beta yesterday. They're obviously continuing to update the docked experience. First, they added a slider for UI scaling. This allows you to scale the text up or down when docked to a display. This option doesn't appear if you're not docked, but otherwise you can just slide it up or down to grow or shrink the OS UI font. They also have a night mode scheduler, which I believe was in one of Gardner Bryant's wishlist videos. So once again, it seems like Valve is listening keenly to feedback from Gardner specifically. So Gardner, quick, ask them about Steam Controller 2.0. We need that like yesterday. But yeah, you can now set a schedule for night mode, which is a nice addition. And the last big thing they've added is a new update channel. So before they had stable and beta. Beta updates more frequently. And basically if you opt into beta, you're kind of opting in to be a tester. Well, if you really want to be on the bleeding edge, there's a new channel called Preview. They've added descriptions to these channels and Preview says, testing for new Steam and system level features, updates frequently, you may encounter issues. Of course, that last bit is the most important. Don't do this if you're not willing to deal with potential issues. Oh, and according to the expaw of SteamDB fame, Valve are still working on a QR login feature. I reported on this way back before the Steam Deck launch. There was a leak of a feature that would allow you to log into your Steam Deck using a QR code, but we haven't seen that come to fruition yet. Apparently it's still being worked on and hopefully on the way. Let's see. And finally, I have two community spotlights for you today. These are both really, really good. First up, I have Mosquito, who just released a video on how to pair and connect basically every controller. Xbox, DualShock, DualSense, Pro Controller, Steam Controller. It's a nice guide and shows the benefits and drawbacks of each controller type, so check that out. Link in the description below. The second community spotlight for today is a video of a hardware mod by MC Kook. So this hardware mod is for dual stage triggers. If you own a Steam Controller, you know how nice the dual stage triggers are, 
It's similar to a GameCube control pad where you can press down the analog triggers 99% of the way, but the last bit has resistance to it and you press it down like a button. There are a number of uses for something like that and the functionality is already built into Steam input. So yeah, check out his video for a tutorial on how he did it. Once again, a link will be in the description. All right, that concludes today's news roundup. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but also let me know what you think of today's topics. Do you think Nintendo will come after LTT? And what do you think of emulation? Do you think Nintendo will ever bring games to PC? And what about those Steam Deck updates? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget, if you really love what I'm doing, consider joining my Patreon friends and signing up to help me out. I'd really appreciate that. All right, that gang out. Goodbye.